Welcome to the Vet Dental Show. I'm Brett Beckman, board certified veterinary dentist, and we bring this podcast to you every Wednesday as a veterinarian, as a technician, as a dentistry team to help you be even better at veterinary dentistry in your practice. We're sponsored and partnered today with the Veterinary Dental Practitioner Program. If you're interested in being among the best anywhere in general practice as a team in veterinary dentistry, I invite you to request an invitation. Just go to ivdi.org slash inv, like invitation, first three letters, inv, so ivdi. International Veterinary Dentistry Institute, ivdi.org slash INV, and we'll get you the information uh, that you need. She asks, is there any benefits to having the patient in dorsal as opposed to lateral, other than being able to visualize all the teeth at once and not having to flip the patient? And a lot of people are concerned about the fluid accumulating at the back of the mouth. And this is a this is a common question, and um, this is uh, one of those um, techniques and components that really, once you adop- adapt it to your dental program, a lot of people are pleasantly surprised how much easier it is, how much better it is. And because we're taking x-rays in sternal and dorsal recumbency already, that sl- saves us from having to flip that patient again. But for cleaning, polishing, and evaluating, having them in dorsal recumbency just gives you a great visualization. Um, I can still manipulate their head side to side and let a lot of that water drain out. But just as a standard of care for every patient, regardless of what procedure they're having done, we always clean out the back of the throat. And that's just something that we developed um, as part of um, the, the total dental procedure. Um, at the very end, we put them back in sternal recumbency and we're gonna clean out that throat Um, not only um, just at the back of the throat and around the trachea, but we actually go in the trachea with um, uh, cotton-tipped applicators. Um, If it's a large dog, I'm going to use gauze uh, and get the majority of that out, and then we're going to go back with uh, cotton-tipped applicators and, and get that cleaned out. So they're in position just like they would be when you intubate, so that you have good visualization of that throat. You can see right into their trachea and around their trachea and make sure that we don't have uh, any fluid, debris, blood back there that's gonna occlude their airway on recovery. So that's a really important step. Um, and, and regardless of whether we did them in lateral or sternal or dorsal, we're still going to do that procedure for our patients. So um, that's a, a good question, and I hope that you guys will kind of um, jump into that and see how you like it. But most folks come up to me after I've taught them, and I'll see them somewhere at a conference or at a seminar, and they'll say, you know, we've been using that, and we just like it so much better. So I've gotten a lot of positive feedback with that particular uh, tip in, um, in evaluating our patients. Amy Butler asks, does the guidebook you mentioned cover different mouth confirmations? Um, unfortunately, it doesn't because there are so many different um, confirmations that we can see as far as those brachycephalics and uh, those really long snouted dogs like dachshunds. Um, <clears throat> and so when we, um, when we take dental x-rays, we adapt uh, to... Uh, our patient as much as possible, but there's certain troubleshooting that we can do if we don't get the view that we need. And so there's a couple of different angles when manipulating that tube head. Uh, The first angle, the angle that's off the horizon, that determines how long or short your tooth is going to be. And positioned at the correct angle or that bisecting angle gives you an image without 
distortion. The angle side to side, the oblique angle, that tells us uh, where the shadow is going to land and it helps uh, split uh, roots that are overlapping, uh, the fourth premolar, for instance, as well as those brachycephalics where we've got maybe the premolars are stacked. And instead of laying like this and we just lay the shadow down in a straight lateral, we would turn this sideways. And if their premolars are turned sideways and they're very close together, we're going to have um, an issue with um, superimposition, again, if we do a straight lateral. So with those teeth, in, especially in a brachycephalic, I'm gonna oblique my beam either back to front or front to back to help kind of split those roots. You're still gonna have some imposition, but you'll be able to evaluate a little bit better. And um, a lot of troubleshooting, or a lot of taking dental x-rays is troubleshooting. You'll get your view and then uh, knowing what you need to fix in order to get a diagnostic shot in your very next shot, whether it's uh, repositioning the tube head or repositioning your sensor, depending on what the error is. And so um, with that kind of um, practice and knowing those troubleshooting tips, uh, we'll make um, doing really any breed, any size, uh, you'll, you'll get over time. Alrighty, our next question comes from Stephanie. As far as feline pain management, is Zorbium a good pre-med for dental procedures? Uh, for our practice, not so much because we're really um, moving through these cases rather quickly. And uh, according to uh, the package insert or the drug insert, it, it's a good one to two hours onset of action. So we're gonna wanna give something quickly. We're gonna wanna get them pre-medded and be ready for anesthesia um, pretty, pretty soon after they're admitted so that everybody's ready to go and we're not waiting for anything. Especially if you're only doing two or three procedures in a day, um, that's gonna kinda slow things down. Uh, usually applied after uh, IV cath placement to decrease likelihood of us touching it during placement. Um, and that's, uh, that's a good plan. Um, we usually uh, apply it um, on recovery or just before they're recovered. Of course, we're wearing gloves uh, and then they're in the cage and then they're in the cage without anybody really manipulating them because they're already sternal. Um, they don't um, require a lot of um, you know, handling at that point. And so it gives it a good 30 minutes to dry and then uh, they go home uh, of course, about an hour after they're done. So plenty of time that's gonna be good and dried so it's safe for everybody. Uh, what about combining that with Onsior and Gabapentin to go home? Yeah, absolutely. Um, whenever we can use a narcotic together with um, an NSAID, um, and gabapentin, of course, is that an MDA antagonist, and so that's helpful as well. So if the patient, uh, depending on what procedure we've done, and we kind of categorize these as mild, moderate, or severe pain uh, based on their condition or their procedure. So somebody that's had multiple extractions, we're absolutely gonna do a narcotic, with an NSAID if the patient is deemed safe to receive an NSAID. And, um, and those two in combination work really well. If we've got a patient that is severely painful, like a stomatitis patient, uh, maybe a patient that's had full mouth extractions, we're gonna add that gabapentin as well. So um, a number of different combinations, a number of different um, you know, uh, protocols that we can use for these patients based on the patient itself <clears throat> and the procedure that we're doing. So we wanna evaluate and take the big picture and then make those treatment decisions. But certainly um, <clears throat> with, with moderately pain, painful patients, we definitely wanna have a narcotic and uh, an NSAID together, minimum, 
and then if we need to add gabapentin, we can, um, and, um, and then go from there. So that's typically our, our protocol for, uh, for the variety of patients that we see. I hope you enjoyed that episode. If you'd like more information about the Veterinary Dental Practitioners Program, please submit to request an invitation at ivdi.org slash I-N-V.